All right, so welcome to our Pilates round. This week, or the theme for next week coming up is all about the abs in kind of relationship to the holidays coming up. And we know that we use our stomachs or our guts to fill up with yummy food. But the other thing we use our guts for is a lot of stability actually of our body and our back. And so there are lots of ways to look at this. And um, Kim has a great way that she was talking about. So we're gonna have her start off today. So one thing I've been doing in um, with my clients that have osteopenia or bone strengthening issues is I've been using the squishy ball under the thoracic spine quite a bit for, first of all, just for opening the chest. But then I, I realized that if they keep their back on the ball, that thoracic spine is supported and they can actually do upper ab curls here um, drawing without taking their back off the ball, drawing the ribs together. And then if you take your legs up into tabletop, you can actually get a pretty good intense work on the obliques. So I wondered if, you know, that was acceptable for someone with osteopenia or osteoporosis because the back is supported, the thoracic spine is supported. And if anybody else had done anything like that, because I, what I find is that it, it's just hard for people to find the abs without bringing, without coming up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thinking. Yeah, I think that's a great question is what is the load like if they are inclined, supported inclined? Um, so in, in that particular instance, I think it would make me worry a little bit um, as high up as you were. I think what we're trying, at, the fact that you're on a squishy ball makes it feel like it's less impactful, but it's more the angle of force on the spine from that gravity is providing from above. So if that is too much of a load, it could still cause an issue um, for somebody with a severe osteoporosis or osteopenia. So I need, to, I need to do a little research and see what kind of the latest thought is about that um, and see if that would be. I, I understand entirely where you're coming from in, in terms of wanting to get them into sort of that upper ab positioning in order to feel the abs more. It is more challenging to get them there. Um, I think, um, it, I mean, the only other way to really get them into an upper ab curl is to go what you were saying earlier on all fours. So rib cage up, planking and rib cage up from, from all fours position or from a plank position. That's one way we could do it. I know the sensation is not quite the same, um, but it does it does activate those muscles in, in the right way, especially as, as people become more and more aware of what they're doing. Yeah, so that's, let me. That's the key phrase. As they become more and more aware, so many of our <laughs> that we have, you got to you know, like me, got to smack me in the face, and then I know I got been hit. <laughs> <laughs> I know and it's harder now because we can't my inclination would be to take a TheraBand or even a strap and put it under the rib cage while they're on all fours and help them feel that pull upward right but we can't even do that because we're virtual and we're not in person with these people so yeah. we can't even get our hands on to help them feel it so uh, I you know I I want to say that that would be okay, although I'm just not sure that the force is not still there just because they're supported. Maybe it's a little bit less of a force. I just need to check in and see if I can find some information that would let us know how safe that is or how much load that's actually putting on the spine there and what, that, what kind of risk that is if they're supported. We do what I have been doing uh, that is along those lines, but not nearly in that same is asking people to just float the head. And so I can show you what that looks like here. So 
So if I just come down to here, I have that same hook line position that you were in. But again, I'm flat here, taking the hands behind my neck here, really supporting that neck. My cueing is, has become, just for everybody, has become squeezing in on the neck, lengthening the neck. And then from here, without moving, I can actually exhale and drop the rib cage. Already, I feel some work happening here in that drop. And then at the next exhale, dropping that rib cage and letting my hands really supporting, but letting me just float here. So what I, why this and this, I can really connect those ribs and float the head and then go back down. And why I think this is safer is because I'm not actually bending the spine and putting load through the vertebra, right? You can see the difference from just floating here supported to rounding up here, right, coming, and then the force is going down through here into the back body. Yeah, Genevieve. Um, something that I've been doing that I think is maybe a, a combination of the two has been using the ball um, and starting, sorry for the noise of my jacket, starting um, in extension, and then coming into neutral and having them find the neutral point, really like resting their head back in their hands. Um, mm -hmm. And for me, I feel this a lot and I kind of cue them to get longer through the through their spine so that they can kind of feel this here yes. without that. Uh, um, and then, you know, we do some, some a little bit of leg work, um, sometimes coming up into tabletop if it seems like they can handle it um, and just doing that kind of stuff. I don't know if that's a safer version of what Kim was doing or yeah, it, it does require what, them more. What we're trying to do is not put load through the vertebra that uh, we're trying not to put load through the vertebra that can cause stress on, on a fragile bone of the vertebra. Right. So already the squishy ball is a nice tool. I think that's, that's not a bad idea, the squishy ball. Uh, I just, and, and Genevieve, you're right, the angle is less in what you're doing than what Kim was doing. And I do let people um, put their shoulder blades on the roller that way, uh, sometimes I have them lift their hips though to keep the level a little higher when it's the foam roller, but the foam roller doesn't have any squish, right? So the ball does. So let me, let me check in. I don't wanna give you any wrong information. Uh, I want to say that it seems like there'd be less stress there. Uh, there's less of an angle, absolutely. And it's more like floating the head like what I was doing is what you're doing on the ball there. Um, I think also it's a very case by case, right? There's no, there is, there are rules that we put in place for people with osteopenia and osteoporosis because we're protecting a whole population, but we're assuming the risk is high when we put those rules in place. And the risk is actually not that high. Fracture risk for somebody with a mild case of osteopenia is definitely not the same as somebody who's, who has had multiple fractures, right? That person, I wouldn't do any of this with. I wouldn't even float their head. Somebody who's had multiple fractures, I just wouldn't. There's, there's too much risk there. But somebody who has a mild osteopenia, that's, that's a whole different side of the spectrum. And so would I do these things? Probably. And would I worry about it? Probably not, uh, knowing that that's where they are on the scale. The, the difficulty is when you don't know or when you have a group class and people don't self-monitor. So that, that I think is where we need to kind of set a few rules and see. So let me look. I'm towards the, where Genevieve you were doing seems quite safe. Um, Kim, I worry a little bit about the amount of flexion in what you were doing. So maybe I would say a little less flexion or a little lower. So or put the ball a little higher so they stay a little bit lower. If I, if I, oops, I'm sorry, I need this down a little bit. 
if I keep the ball a little higher on my back, right, then I don't end up with as much of a rib or a thoracic uh, rounding. Yes, if I go here more, I end up more in a curl. So this, I'm assuming, would have more load than this right here would have. So that, that is my assumption at this point, but I'm not sure that it's a, a, the correct assumption or a right assumption. It's just an assumption at this point. So let me do a little looking, searching, and maybe I will, I'll get back to you guys and see what I can find out. And then we can, we can go from there. But in the theme of wanting to get more abs on, right, we have a whole bunch of abs to work on. We, we could go through very classic Pilates exercises. So if we were talking about a full population of people who don't have any contraindications for back stuff, right, you've got all your fives, you've got your rolling up and down, you've got your C curves, you've got your overhead stuff, which really makes you work in a good shape if you're doing it well in that curved body shape supportive shape for your spine and gets those abs really fired up. So there's no lack of ab exercises in the Pilates repertoire. It gets a little harder when you wanna keep it all back safe, right? And that's where, uh, where things get a little more challenging and where I think a lot more thought has to go into it. So can you really work abs on all fours, on planks? Can you work abs if the head's down or the back is in a safe place, absolutely, right? We, can, we know from our work that we can do full-on advanced workouts that are ab workouts, right? Uh, without ever rolling up and down the spine, uh, without uh, compromising anybody, or even without lifting the head if we had to, yeah? Uh, the upper abs, though, in that case, are gonna end up having to work. If your head has to stay down, upper abs have to get their work from from on all fours, so cats and even child's pose type positions or downward dogs, right? And we're not gonna push to end range there. We're just gonna push to get that activation in the rib cage there. So I think that that's where I would take that. So um, yeah, go ahead. Um, well, if we're gonna talk about cats and whatnot, can I just share? an oblique cat that I kind of invented. Um, okay, so it's similar to, to what, you've, what you've demonstrated in the past with the roller. Um, you know, starting up and then keeping the tail over the knees and then using the belly and driving upward through the middle, but if you take the roller off to the side a little bit, still keep the tail between the between the feet, and then glide through this way. You can find like this right side oblique really lifts you up, and you get a really nice little back and side stretch on the left side at the same time. Um, and so that's just one I've been doing, you know, on each side. A little bit with people. Um, I like doing it. <laughs> anyway. That looks great. Yeah. Similar to when we do the um, push through a little bit or the cat with the both hands on one side of the bar. Right. You get that same feeling. Yeah. What do you think, Kim? Yes. <laughs> yeah yeah I think that's great well and that leads me to think we talked about other side side sit-ups and all of those are one way to get those obliques going without rolling the head up too right so we could do we did a few versions of a side sit-up granted they're so much harder when you're not using a springboard or some assistive the tower or something that can assist but I think I've played, I played with it quite a bit and found a couple ways to assist with the hand below. So I can show you those uh, if you want. 
there's a couple of ways. One that would be to have the roller. Oops, sorry, I have my head here. Right, I could use that roller and I could have my legs stretched out straight. And then I can connect the hard part here for me is actually in my hypermobile self is connecting this shoulder down, but I can use that to come up and go down. And you could even take a leg in front if you wanted a little more stability for somebody and down. And now we're getting this side, side work happening, yeah? And then down. So that's one way that I found is a nice way to help, help somebody to get to that without having the springboard. The other would be just doing it with the hand here and working to come up. And um, I do get a lot of work out of that. I seem to get paraspinal a little more than oblique, maybe just my body position. I bet if I focus on going this way a little bit more, I could get more oblique then into that extension that will give me more posterior structure. But that's another way to do it. The other way potentially would be to grab your TheraBand and place it on your foot. I know you can't see the bottom of my foot, but I just have it wrapped on the bottom of my foot and stretched out and I can pull quite a lot of tension here. And then I can try coming, keeping that leg long and coming up and down and up. Still not a very big motion, but I'm definitely working for that motion in the oblique. Yeah. So side uh, sit-ups and things like that are always good for getting those obliques working when we don't want to go up in when we don't want to go straight up from uh, into an upper abdominal curl. So that's always a nice way to do that. Remembering that we're never going to force end range, but obviously here it's too hard to really get into full range. So I don't think there's that much to worry about there, but that would be one, one way to activate. Uh, make sure you do the other side later on, right? <laughs> so you're not lopsided when we're done. Yeah. So um, that might be some a tool to use in any sort of modified way. So this this was pretty hard on my arm. Maybe my arm's just wimpy or sore from all the exercises yesterday. But mm -hmm. kind of hard on my arm. Could yes. I, Gen well, Genevieve's got the ball there. Could we do it with the ball? Yeah, it was hard on my arm too, but maybe because I've been trying to do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing, I've been using the ball a little bit with people and I find I have to put it a little bit further down, kind of more in the ribs, which may be a problem for some people. Um, but if they've got a squishy enough ball, sometimes it's enough or if they can kind of prop themselves to where it's just kind of a, a little lift. Um, and then I'll have them, you know, better use the arm to help. Usually we'll start using the arm to come up and down, and then I'll have them come up and try and hold and then lower down. And then for the, the brave ones, do it all on their own. Um, I just find the, the ball kind of helps Help give a little more range of motion so it doesn't feel so much like you're getting stuck. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's, again, probably problematic for some people with rib issues, but. Yeah. I think I would be, I would be careful with people with rib issues. Yeah, I would be careful uh, on that one too, just because there is a lot of body weight going down through the rib cage. What I absolutely wouldn't do just to put it out there is get them on the arc doing that because that's a hard surface. So for sure, if anybody had any reason to be worried about the ribs, I wouldn't put them on the arc in fact at all because I've seen even people with just osteopenia feel injured after being on an arc. 
uh, by just innocently laying over it even, not even trying to upper ab curl. So I would be careful with arcs and people with any sort of thoracic spine contraindication or sensitivity. So uh, just to throw that piece out there. But the squishy ball, again, it's a question of how much force is actually going in, what stage they are in. Um, you're getting more pressure when you're on the ball than when you're on the floor or even with the roller. Uh, so I would be careful about that um, in terms of load. But, but there's a whole population of people who don't have any rib contraindications, and that's a great way to get a side sit up out of them. In fact, I might have to steal it next week. Thank you, Genevieve. I'm only stealing something from some far away. I'm going to borrow it. I'll even name it after you, the Genevieve move. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to claim all of them for myself. But yeah, just so that we get, um, it's a great way to get those abs on, absolutely. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, let me think if there's any, are there any other ab type exercise. So even though the week is going to focus on all abs, I wouldn't, I, I would unwind all that flexion, right? So here's, it's great to work our abs out really hard and nice and get them all strong. But again, there has to be some sort of balance. And especially because our lives are so in front of us and we are so focused on computers and phones and things that bring us small and bent forward. I would be super careful about organizing your class to have some extension in it anyway. Um, and you can cue abdominal lifting and extension a lot. I find that's a great way to work the abs too, is when you're sort of planking up from the floor. So if you think of the Pilates powerhouse exercises that are prone, like powerhouse on the chair or rocking swan or grasshopper, all of those are prone exercises, but they're asking for a plank body um, all of those are great exercises. Yeah, so Je what Genevieve you're doing is great because that's like the single leg kick, but picking the belly up off the floor on prone. So yeah, exactly that idea of having that um, positioning where I can be on my belly, but still working to lift my belly. So I'm getting a lot of work out of that belly. And if I come in and press up, I can actually lift the belly rather than hang the belly down, right? Lifting that belly here, this is great ab work. And I can have them pull and hold. I can have them try and do single leg kick, double leg kick, all without the belly getting to the floor. Yeah, double legs up, I can work on that. That is really activating the abs here a lot. And um, so this is a great way to work the abs here, but also not be in that forward flex. So, and then you could move into swan or uh, open chest. I like to call this sphinx, kind of a sphinxish type of position where I'm really opening and then I can pull in and hollow and open and pull in. So they really feel the difference between that powerhouse position and the open position. And that's a lot of work to get that, those muscles on there and then releasing, yeah. So lifting in and then releasing. So it's a, it's a lot a lot of great ab work there. And then one of my absolute favorites is uh, either coming from all fours forward into the plank. I find that that really works my abs a lot more. So if I come from all fours, coccyx curl, roll forward through, and into the plank, I feel like I'm a lot more on and lifted in my belly side than if I just go forward into plank. So you could do that there, or you could even do it from that elephant right here, and then curling through the tail, opening. So I'm going through that round place and opening. Now I'm really still lifted in that rib cage as I come to here. So this is one of my favorite ways in and out of the plank, just because I can activate glutes, coccyx curl, rib cage up and keep that rib cage up and lifting. I can even have them stay a little high in that rib cage before coming into that plank. Yeah, and then you could do the same from here, allowing it open because you want to open 
and finding it again, lifting up, right? allowing the open chest and then rib cage up. Yeah, so those are ways to activate the abs in, yeah, that's it. Hard work, work yeah. <laughs> oh, Kim, lift that rib cage, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it, it is challenging. Um, but a great way, I think, to get onto the get into those arms. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So don't have to be on your back to do ab work, and you don't have to lift the head, but you could. And so I think you know, for my super strong class, where I have the people in there, and there's not any modifications for back safe, we will do some rolling, we'll do some um, C curve and lifting because it just feels nice too. And we get that lengthening through the spine and the flexibility through the spine. But I will definitely be doing some of these planking, um, all fours planking and, and tummy down and, and sort of a seesaw grasshopper powerhouse type of idea uh, with them as well. So that we get the balance of being coming up forward but also opening up back but still feeling like you're really engaged in that tummy side. Yeah, I was, Genevieve, I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't thought of this before. Right. Oh. That was great. So rocking swan on roller. Really nice. I like it. I love it. Also, like a little bit of an easier push-up, I feel like. Yeah, it is actually. I was thinking of for those that hate push-ups. Right. I mean, doing a push-up, and it really forces you to keep your legs engaged. Whereas, uh, you know, so many people do push-ups. Yes, it's really working too, and you can do a bunch of them, and keep the elbows in. All good features. Yeah. Uh, I know, it's like you read my mind. I was thinking that same exact thing, and then she pulled out the roller. I'm like, yes, good job, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I might actually be warm enough to take off my jacket now. Phew. <laughs> so, yeah, great. Yeah, so there's just being, being creative and being um, curious, and that one is totally safe for everybody, and great work. And if we go back to your original Kim Bone Strengthening, that's a great way to put weight through the arms, which we want to do arms and wrists. Yep, yep. I think that's coming next week. Mm -hmm. well, next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then are you going to take the class through uh, standing, right? And trying to balance like without tightening your stomach, without engaging your stomach, you know, just to see the difference, something like that. You could. And what might be interesting is to start the class in standing right. and then end the class in standing and let them feel the difference or the connection, the difference when they have that good, strong connection happening yeah. through their yeah. tummy. Yeah. So I, I, with my classes and the groups that I've had, we were on, on to healthy hamstrings all week this week. So I really did very little abs and did a lot of standing work. So I think for my cl my class in specific, I think I'm going to just torture their abs and do very little in standing <laughs> this week. But you know, they might it might just be too much, and we might have to go <laughs> into standing. But I think because of because of what I just did last week, I might not opt to stand. But I think it's a great idea, mm -hmm. and I think it's a great way to show them, you know, what what it can do for you, how connected you can be. I mean, I feel connected just after those few little demos we did and the last little rocking swan on the roller was really nice too. So um, just from that, so hopefully with the whole 45 minutes of abs connecting, they'll feel very different at the start and end of a class. So it'd be nice to have them acknowledge that difference with some balance exercises. I think it'd be excellent. Yeah. 
doing. I'm trying a side plank now. <laughs> that IT band though. It's an idea. It, it's <laughs> IT band sensitive. It's not great. <laughs> Yeah, no. you try it. Never know till you try it. <laughs> I don't think I can even do it. Lower down. Oh my gosh. Fine. Oh, lower down is better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, you've got it all at your ankles now. Look at you. <laughs> Almost to my ankles, and it doesn't hurt my legs at all. Yeah. It feels fine, actually. The only, only thing I wonder if then I don't put very much weight on my feet, on my legs, and so it feels like it's all up in my shoulders and arms. Ribs, too, of course, but Whereas if I have my feet pressing in to the floor, I think it takes some of the load. I don't know. Um, I think it's just actually, I think this is something that is worth mentioning maybe or talking about. When you go to a plank on the elbows or you go to a, a plank, side plank on the elbow, the body angle is actually lower. So I find that it's actually more weight, right? If we think about physics, that makes, we know that that's true. Right. But so I actually think you'll have less pressure up on your arm if, if you can handle being on that arm and shoulder, the elbow wrist can handle it it seems actually a little bit uh, less work through that upper body if you can actually be on the outstretched arm because the angles yeah. easier angle. Can't do it with so, my angles up on the or my feet on the roller though. But I haven't tried. To I I'm not strong enough to do that. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> it's hard, huh? Yes. What am I doing wrong? Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not. I what think we. Yeah. I can try the other side. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> Yeah, practice that one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's worth practicing. So it's good to find things to practice, right? Yeah. But, but yes, fun. Definitely fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any other questions or thoughts? Or off topic questions or thoughts? things that you guys have been thinking about or? Well, um, <sighs> trying to think, trying to think through my clients. I'm always looking for ways to help one of my elderly lady clients walk and connect. So here's an, a question totally off uh, off of the app challenge, uh, app talk topic, but um, trying to get somebody to do the sit stands, but sitting in a chair to, to standing, and sometimes it just it's like there's no engagement in the backside at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's physical or not. Um, I guess ways, uh, maybe ideas of ways. So what I've been doing is doing standing, 
just more standing work, moving the leg back and forth to get the backside engaged or even seated the hamstring things with the um, strap. Mm -hmm. And then later in the session, she'll be able to, to do the sit stand. So get up from the chair and stand without hands. Mm -hmm. I yeah, know. I think, um, I think, you know, the tricks are, which I think you already know, but I'll just throw them out there, but it's cueing into the heels more for posterior activation. Uh, maybe if you can get her down on the table doing more bridging work, but bridging work where you're pulling the heels in or cueing that pull in. Uh, you could, if it's somebody who's stable enough to put the feet on the roller, that helps because it doesn't allow them to scoot it away. They have to control pulling in so it gets more hamstring activation that way. Um, the other way you could try is bridging in the trapeze on the Cadillac, or if you had access to TRX, those are great ways to activate posteriorly a little more strongly, and then put them back into a fun the person back into a functional position. So those might be good warm up exercises too. I like your hamstring curling. You can also do hamstring curling and standing uh, with a band that would challenge balance and get hamstring and be vertical, which is more functional. So that, yeah. that is something that you could do. You know how to do that, stepping on the band with one foot and the heel in and then just curling it up behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be a good challenge, potentially really good challenge. Um, so I find the squatting if against the wall or over the chair are good ones because they help activate posterior because it allows the butt and the whole trunk trunk torso to get behind a little bit more than if you do just a freestanding squat. So that, that might be a good tool is to do it against the wall or something instead. Trying to emulate getting up from the, the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm, I shouldn't laugh. I'm only laughing because I'm going to thank Gracie and Frankie, if you've ever watched that show with Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. <laughs> the, what did they call it? The lift up, the lift, elevate, the rise what? Up. elevate yourself, the rise up. The rise up. <laughs> the rise up. <laughs> and when they, Frankie put the dummy on the chair and the button went, she pushed the button and the dummy flew across the room. I was like, oh no. <laughs> that was probably my favorite episode I've ever watched of a show. I think I laughed so hard. And just knowing the plight of our own clients of getting up off the toilet, like it's such a real plight that they have. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if um, I was having, I was thinking about like the, you're, you're talking about using the hamstring curls um, in seated and I wonder if in order to get the that like heel down activation, if you put, you know, those little slider plates or whatever that just kind of slide along the floor, if you put that under her heel and have her slide it back so that she can't lift. Because a lot of people wind up leaning back. Um, and instead having her kind of push down to pull back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that would be helpful or not. I could try it. I don't know. It might be not stable enough. My, I don't know. I think she could do it seated or even um, oh. lying down, like in hook lying, doing a, uh, a, a grab that. like that. I, I yeah, don't know yeah. if that would be. Mm -hmm. That would be a great thing mm -hmm. for me to see what's, if, <laughs> if it's, anything's happening back there too. But yeah. In a yeah. Mental way. And you could, you could put the TheraBand around her heel while she's in hook lying and have her pull again slide with a slider and have her pull towards her bottom and then you could actually feel if there's activation or how much resistance you're getting from her while you're doing that see i knew that's why i brought this up you smart people yeah <laughs> the uh, the other thing i was going to throw at you is right now so it's a little bit of a fun it's kind of I shouldn't say it's fun but it's a good challenge even I'm finding it to be a good challenge 
where I have a client who is in her early 80s and she had, I work with her consistently every week because she has uh, stenosis, spinal stenosis. So she's pain in the right side, uh, lower back, uh, sometimes across the lower back, but right side, glute, butt, hamstring, and also is in need of a left hip replacement, I believe. We're about to find out for sure. So there's a lot of left hip pain. Uh, so I work with her for strengthening and stabilizing and keep her knees aligned and her ankles aligned. She has a huge leg length difference. We've been working on figuring out what her shoes need to look like and everything as well. And now she went in and had cataract surgery. And she was so worried because she had one eye done. So for two weeks, her head cannot go below her waist. And now then after those two weeks, she's going in to have the other eye done. So it means four weeks of not letting her head go down, meaning she cannot lay on her back. So I've had this crazy challenge of trying to keep her abs strong, glutes strong, hamstrings strong, while she can't even lay on her back. So it's been that we've been doing a lot in seated, which is why I was thinking about her when you were talking about your client getting up and down from the chair. We can, she can she does wall squats, she does sit to stand. We do a lot of the arm work and standing. We do lung, some lunging, punching, and things like that. We also just started doing um, a lot of like knee presses in and seated, band around the knees pressing out and seated. We do a lot of quad activation um, exercise. So you seat it in the chair and she's trying to just straighten the knees which and activate the, the top of the quad while she's seated in the chair. So that's also a great exercise for her. And then we are... Um, working on all the hamstring exercises as well and seated and trying to keep her, you can, and then we're doing the one that we, we didn't talk about. So I have her sitting on the edge of a chair. So I'm gonna use my roll and pretend that's the edge of a chair and have her hands down. She's putting them up like this. I won't do that on the roller. That would be oh, not very good. And then she's scooping into coccyx curl and back, right? Scooping into coccyx curl. So it's a great way to see how they get to the coccyx curl and what they activate to get there. Because you can see it all in the chair. It activates the hamstrings, activates the deep abdominals. So it's nice, it's, it's better when you see it uh, on a chair itself rather than on the roller. But that might be another one that you could use to see what she's doing in terms of activation. You could have her hold that position and pull the heels in a little bit, and kind of have that positioning and then work to pull and release, pull, and release, pull those heels in. And I can feel that activate right up at the top of my hamstrings up here when I do that. So that might be a nice. Are you, is she sitting in the chair? She's not scooping in front yeah. of like we do on the, the chair, right? Yes, yeah, she's sitting on and then she lifts her bottom off. Yep. Off in front of the chair? Yes, she does. Wow. <laughs> okay. She can do it. Yes. It's amazing. She can do it. But I told her you can put as much weight in your feet as you need to. So you can put a lot of weight in your feet and not have them very far away. And that's how she's managing to do it, I think. Uh, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. Just, this angle is not great. Yeah. I see. Yeah. This, the angle on the roller is not high enough. And she also actually has a right hip replacement and a right shoulder replacement. So she, um, and she can do it. So if they put enough weight on the feet, you don't have to have the arm strength or shoulder strength to do it. Like you don't have to be super, super person with the shoulder strength I to do it. Okay. So it's just a nice way to connect. We were trying to figure out ways that she could connect and keep her abs going, keep her legs strong, her glutes going without having her head go down at mm -hmm. all so it all hit the chair we hit the chair <laughs> getting her going we get to be very creative sometimes don't we <laughs> we do it's great I mean, it keeps things interesting for us but definitely keeps the wheels turning figuring out working around trying to meet people's needs um, yeah but yeah all righty all right, well, thank you guys for being here and um, I'll look forward to 
our next meeting, which I think next week we're fine. Probably the week, the week after is Christmas, I believe. So we won't do that week. Yeah. And, and New Year's Eve. And then New Year's Eve. So we'll probably have two weeks off just because we landed on those days specifically. So, um, so we'll just next week, if you have questions or things you want to cover, we'll absolutely do that. And then we'll be back in January. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.